procession will end, and I give you greeting. Uh, we're going to have a, a prayer for Queen Elizabeth, and then we'll sing, after a moment of silence, we'll sing God Save the King. So let us sing our processional hymn, Immortal, Invisible God, Only Wise, number 393. <laughs> Long live the king.
Let us pray together on page 185. Almighty God, to you all hearts are one, all desires known, and from you the secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. for me out of the bare heights of the desert towards my poor people, not to win or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak to judgment against them. For my people are foolish, they do not know me. They are stupid children, they have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on earth, and lo, it was waste and void. And to the heavens they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and the birds had fled, the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a dissolution. Yet I will make a full end. Because of this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above will block. For I have spoken, I have purposed, and I have not relented, nor will I turn back. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 14, found on page 717. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and convinced of the last. There is not a good. The Lord who 
looks down from heaven upon us all. This year, there is many who are If there is one who seeks after God, everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned mad. There, there is none who does good. No, 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 no. Have they no knowledge, all of these evildoers? We do not have like bread and do not call upon the Lord. See how they tremble with fear. Because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted. But the Lord is the refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. The Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Yea, the Lord rejoices in Israel and the high. Let us pray to God. God of wisdom and love. Without you, neither truth nor holiness can survive. Show your mighty presence among us and make us glad in completing your deliverance in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. I am grateful to Jesus Christ our Lord. He has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me, and the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Jesus Christ came to the world to save sinners of whom I am foremost. But for that very reason I reserved mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal and invisible, the only God, we honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. The Lord is to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we hear 
these two parables that Jesus tells. The parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin. Our minds automatically go to that list of people that we consider to be lost. People with severe mental health illnesses. The kids who uh, shill for change at the stoplights. Alcoholics, drug users. People who seem to be seem to have lost their moral compass. People who are abusive, intolerant, prejudiced. It's a long list of people that we think of when we hear these two parables. Surely they are lost. But that's not who Jesus was talking about. Remember that he was speaking to the Pharisees and scribes. The Pharisees and scribes had been muttering and complaining that Jesus ate with sinners. He had company. He sat down with dinner with these people. Can you imagine? So Jesus tells the Pharisees, these two parables. The lost sheep and the 99 are already part of the flock. The lost sheep is already part of the flock. The lost coin had already been in possession of the woman. Jesus is not talking about people who are outside of the faith, who may have never heard the story of salvation, who do not have any working knowledge of Jesus or God or church or worship. Jesus is talking about us. Jesus is talking about people who are already in the church. Jesus is speaking about the baptized. The one who is lost is the one who has turned their back on their baptismal promises. Who has lost their, their way spiritually. So Jesus speaks about us. What are we to do? I think first and foremost, it calls us to examine ourselves and to think seriously and to pray seriously about what our relationship to God is. How does Jesus fit into our lives? Is it just for this hour, maybe two hours on a Sunday morning, and then the rest of the week we all hell breaks loose? I, I know most of you. I, I know you don't do that. <laughs> but we do need to, to sit down. And, and Jesus is talking about the lost sheep that repents and the lost coin who repents. Somebody who doesn't know Jesus, somebody who's never heard the story of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection and his life and the Holy Spirit and God's love for us. Those kids that are out at the stoplights in Brantford, um, in Simcoe, different places, they don't know what repentance means. They have no idea about the love that God has for them. They have no idea that Christ died for their sins. They have no idea that there is any need for them to repent. It's not for us to take them by the lapels and shake them <laughs> and say, repent. 
I've, I've never been into hellfire and brimstone. But it is our responsibility, it is our calling to be God's people in the world, to be agents of his love. Sometimes it's hard to do. Jeremiah found it really hard to do because he was looking at a civilization that was crumbling. The, the people of Israel uh, practiced terrible injustice upon the poor and the marginalized, and they were flirting with, with foreign powers, inviting them to, to come and, and, and cozy up with them. And Jeremiah is warning them that their indifference to morality, their indifference to God, their indifference to the, to the, to the, to the love of their Creator was going to end up in a complete reverse of the creation in Genesis 1. You can trace it. The birds all go away. The fruits and vegetables all go away. Until finally the earth is void and numb. There aren't even any stars or sun or moon. That's how drastic Jeremiah's warning is. That's why sometimes when, when somebody is always pointing out what's wrong with the world and the terrible things that are happening, sometimes we call him like Jeremiah. That's why. Our role is not to point fingers at other people. Our role is to invite people into the love that God has for them. To be examples of what it means to be in that love. To show them what repentance means. I know so many people who are churched, but who think so well of themselves that they do not feel they have any need for repentance. We all have a need for repentance. We need only look into our hearts to know this. So as we consider Jesus' parables today, let us remember that we are the lost sheep. We are the lost coin, and God is searching diligently for us. God is down on his hands and knees looking under the furniture and behind the couch cushions for that lost coin. God is climbing and scrambling over rough terrain in the wilderness looking for us, each one of us, and does not stop looking for us until he finds us and brings us home. That's what amazing grace means. We sing amazing grace and we don't think sometimes about what it means, but this is God's amazing grace that he loves us so much that he does that. Let us be aware of those moments in our lives this coming week when God is reaching out to us, when God is calling us to repentance, when God is calling us to be compassionate and forgiving, when God is calling us to be his people. Let us continue as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 189. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by power of the Holy 
for George, Lisa, Marilyn, Lance, Jared, Linda, Leo, Renee and Melissa, Mark and Rebecca, Ron, Stan, and all those known in our parks alone. We pray for prisoners and captives and for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us repent and let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who have died, especially our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth II. And for Pat Crosshaw, whose life was celebrated here last week. And for Reverend Shackles. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Remembering St. Alban and St. John and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our promise of patience to you. And you have promised through your loud beloved Son that when we were free our gathered together, you will hear your requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as it may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge and your truth, and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Your friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all ways, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord.
number and seven. Seven seven. Thank you. 
When on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise our Savior this time.
May we who have been nourished by holy things always have the courage to forgive. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And we pray together, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, for ever and ever. God, which passes all of our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. 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 We uh, sing our recession of him, number 606. So far, I 
but there's the aroma of pizza wafting through the church. And we're going to enjoy a nice pizza lunch now for our welcome back students. Thank <laughs> you.